Okay, I think we can start. Thank you everybody for attending to my talk. Uh, just uh, two notes about me. Uh, my name is Stefano Babic. I'm uh, working for Denx, uh, software engineer in Germany. I'm a uh, uh, U-boot maintainer for NXP uh, processors for U-boot, uh, and uh, I'm uh, the author of uh, Software Data is the topic of this talk. And uh, of course, uh, I think I have not to say something about why it's important to update the embedded system. We have not to hide our hand in the sand. But uh, uh, believe me, there are still a lot of people, a lot of managers, that I think, uh, why do we have to update our system? Uh, we have tested, we have developed, it works. Uh, this talk uh, is uh, not for this kind of people uh, living in uh, Alice in Wonderland. It's just uh, for tough developers who uh, choose uh, the red pill, if you ever seen uh, the Betis movie. So, first of all, I want to show you, because uh, a lot of the time was asked uh, uh, what I have to do to import or to use a soft update uh, in my project. I think it is uh, the wrong question because uh, really it should be the opposite. So uh, we have uh, an embedded uh, system, a lot of uh, variation, and uh, uh, important uh, in a system is the application. So an update agent should not uh, change uh, the behavior of uh, the application, should not uh, add further uh, dependencies. So really, soft update is not uh, an out-of-box tool, it's more a framework, and this framework should be adapted for each uh, uh, custom project. So I have ported some example, uh, real example, so real products. Uh, this is one of my favorite products because uh, our project because uh, when uh, uh, my parents uh, or uh, some friends ask me what I'm doing, I say, okay, I'm a software developer, I'm working with open source software, Linux. Okay, you're doing something with computer. Uh, but this is a coffee machine. It's uh, easy to understand, and uh, everybody knows now, okay, I'm a coffee machine maker. Uh, the coffee machine is, has Linux, of course. It must be updated, but uh, it's not an over update. Why? Because uh, uh, the machine has milk, so it must be uh, changed, uh, not changed, but it must be cleaned very often, as uh, it does not smell very well. So there's uh, a technician, a technician, sorry, uh, someone is bringing new coffee, cleaning up the, the, the machine, but he has no idea about computer. So the manufacturer doesn't say, okay, I cannot give him a computer and try to set IP address or something like that. It must be very simple. So the solution in this case is a software update is running, check for USB stick, USB stick is mechanical, so the technician can insert in the right slot, maybe not at the first uh, attempt, but he can, and uh, press a button, and the result uh, is just uh, a smile or a grin. So, uh, very simple, I have to drop all logs, it was nice for me, but I say the technician then uh, is confused. Another example, is uh, these are 3D cameras, so they uh, can understand the distance from objects. They are using uh, industrial application, and uh, we have a technician. We have a technician with uh, uh, high competencies because he has to understand which software should be installed on each camera and which configuration should be downloaded on each camera. In this case, software update is running, we have uh, an integrated web server, and the technician push the software, the new software, to the target. A different use case uh, is, uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, this company makes something with power energy, and this one is a controller. Uh, 
and uh, they sailed uh, all around the world. And uh, uh, in most cases, uh, in countries where there are, I can say, bad internet connection or quite uh, bad, no internet connection at all. So uh, with a GSM modem, and the connection uh, is broken uh, a lot of time. So in this case, uh, the, key, uh, the key feature is uh, that uh, soft update uh, does not restart uh, to download uh, the image uh, when uh, the connection is broken. It must be able to resume a connection. The connection can uh, even take a long time. It's not a problem, but it should come to, to the end. And uh, this is just possible if the, uh, the downloader is not restarted again. Another approach, but uh, I forgot to say, in, in this case, uh, the manufacturer put the software uh, on a server, but it does not need uh, to understand uh, if uh, all devices uh, was uh, upgraded to a new software or not. It just, I put the software, the device should uh, take, but uh, I don't collect. Another use case is using uh, a backend. A backend uh, or deployment system has uh, several names. This is the Hawkbit uh, uh, server, deployment server. Um, it's an uh, open source uh, project uh, under the umbrella of uh, Eclipse uh, uh, Foundation. Uh, it's mainly driven by Bosch, so most of the uh, developers are Bosch. And this one uh, is uh, a Bosch device, it's a smart home from Bosch, you can buy, uh, at least in Germany, I found in uh, a lot of uh, discounts. And uh, uh, soft update is running uh, on the devices, and what they are using is also uh, some additional feature, for example, soft update collects uh, data from uh, the device, sends to the server, and uh, depending uh, uh, where the, the, the device is installed, uh, a different software is, uh, is sent. Uh, they have a different software for UK, for Germany, for other countries. Uh, another use case is uh, when uh, something uh, goes wrong. So we have uh, uh, our device. Our device uh, seems uh, broken. So soft update is used uh, in uh, rescue mode. Uh, so uh, the footprint of soft update and uh, all what is needed is uh, uh, very small and uh, can be put also in uh, uh, small storage. And this uh, makes it possible to start the device in rescue system and uh, put the software again. So at the end, uh, which, is, which are the uh, requirements we need from an update agent? So soft update is an update agent. So of course, I, I can say we have three requirements, and then uh, an update agent must be reliable, then must be reliable, and then must be reliable. So uh, how can we reach uh, this? So the first thing, an update must be atomic. So it cannot be that just a part of the update is installed and the rest is not installed. Uh, or just a library is uh, updated and the rest no. It uh, uh, should be a nightmare for the support uh, because uh, it's just uh, it's like uh, as uh, the customer uh, calls uh, and asks uh, uh, the update was stop uh, versus uh, for example, libcurl was updated, uh, I don't know what is, uh, and uh, something else, no. Uh, the, the support people have no idea because uh, it's uh, untested. We are, have always, uh, with an embedded system, uh, we go going from uh, a release A to a release B, and there's nothing in between. Uh, another big feature, so another feature that uh, an update agent must have uh, is uh, regarding the verification of the, uh, of the update package. So it should be verified that uh, the uh, update package is coming from a verified source, not that everyone has changed something, pushed to our device, and our device is working. 
of course, this uh, requires much more to, to investigate. It's not just the update. Uh, it's also the, uh, part of a secure boot. But of course, if we were not a secure update, even if we have a secure boot, uh, we have not uh, closed uh, the circle because uh, we update the system, and after the boot, uh, a, a new boot, uh, the system is broken. Uh, we need an uh, uh, unattended update. So, uh, of course, it's not like a PC. There is nothing in the front of our device. The system should be able to manage error, to have a fallback. Uh, should be able to uh, update all common uh, parts of our system. So usually we have uh, bootloader, kernel, root file system, but not only. Uh, I can say we have FPGA. FPGA can have uh, even storage attached. And uh, uh, an update agent should be able to update also what is specific for an embedded system. If something is going wrong during an update, or the application is going up and uh, check that everything uh, went wrong, we should have uh, a rollback. Rollback is not in all situations, but uh, I will uh, show you later a NB approach, and uh, uh, the system should be able to restart the previous uh, version if something is going wrong. And of course, uh, it should uh, take uh, as much as possible of the most important law, even if uh, it's not yet always possible. So as I said, uh, we have different parts uh, that we have to update. So not only what is common, but even FPGA, microcontroller, configuration data, calibration data, Two common approach. I want this is a uh, most used approach, uh, but the software data is not limited to this approach. I want to show you, but really you can have uh, much more of this. Uh, one approach is uh, I call it uh, single copy. Someone is calling uh, rescue system or recovery, whatever. Uh, the thing is, uh, you have uh, a running system. In some way, you have a trigger, and you know, I have to update the system. You switch, you reboot, and uh, you communicate to the, to the bootloader that uh, you need to upgrade. The bootloader then starts a rescue system, a small system for software data is uh, in a RAM disk. This is running. We start to uh, flash everything, so get the image, flash uh, uh, what I has to install, and uh, if everything is successful, reboot again and start the produ production system. Uh, if in between uh, something is wrong, uh, there is no problem because it's like a transaction. So software data sets a transaction when it starts. If there is uh, a power cut, the bootloader is coming again. He knows there was a power cut. I have to restart the software data. Software data is running again until it is successful. The other common approach is uh, a double copy, or AB, or whatever. Uh, in this case, we have uh, two copies of our software. A big advantage uh, is we can update uh, without uh, offline. Because on the rescue system, we have to boot. Uh, our application is not running anymore. And during the update, uh, we have uh, an offline time. Uh, we have not doing uh, a double copy, but we have to reserve uh, space uh, for two copies of our software. So in some cases, some way there is a trigger. Software data is started. And uh, get the image uh, and flash uh, the standby copy. When I finish, everything was OK. Reboot the system, switch the between a standby copy and uh, production uh, running system. The bootloader is informed of this. Uh, 
and can start uh, the other copy. And they all where the, the, the system was running before is becoming the standby copy. Uh, I said uh, we as a these two are the most used, but I can combine them. For example, I used this in a lot of projects on iMix 6. So I have a rescue system. This rescue system is very small, so the footprint is small. And they can put all together in an 8 megabyte flash, SPI flash. Uh, I use this uh, also in the factory because uh, the problem is uh, also I can, how can I put uh, all my software for the first time? And uh, in this case, uh, the SPI flash is a uh, program once with a SPI programmer. Then uh, all devices are coming uh, for testing. They are simply connected to the network. Soft update is running, uh, let's say, in uh, factory mode. So he knows I'm running in factory mode. He connects with a server inside the factory, uh, takes the, the, the right software, uh, make partitions, uh, set everything, uh, and at, at the end we have uh, a setup like uh, a dual copy. At the end of the process, uh, uh, there's a switch again, so uh, it's not anymore in factory mode, but uh, in production mode. And for the life of the product, uh, it's running uh, with uh, an AB approach. But if something is uh, really going wrong, for example, partition table is corrupted, the system is not broken because it can still run in a rescue mode and can get uh, a new software. So something about uh, soft update. Uh, I started the project uh, and at the end of uh, 2014. Uh, is GPL version 2. There's a library. I will uh, talk about the library uh, later. This is uh, less GPL. It's uh, to be a link uh, with uh, custom code or proprietary application. Uh, an important point, uh, I delivered uh, soft update uh, together with a BSP, that means uh, generally uh, an application developer needs to have uh, a system running. So bootloader, kernel, and uh, Yotto, so building and everything should be already running. Soft update is part of this, uh, and uh, the, the thing is uh, that everybody, any application developer is using soft update uh, to generate, uh, to update uh, its own target. Uh, before having this, uh, uh, you, f you know, if there are uh, 10 developers, they will find 10 different ways to update uh, the system. Some of them will use the U-Boot console and uh, use a TFTP, get the software, flash everything, and so on. Some is running on Linux, and then copy uh, with Linux tool. Something are using something else. Uh, the thing is that uh, this is, is then part of a continuation integration. So uh, everybody is using this during uh, the development. Uh, if there are some bugs, uh, they are solved uh, during the development and not later. And uh, I can tell you that uh, I have uh, uh, practically no uh, bugs reported by the field uh, because all uh, bugs uh, were already discovered during, during the development. Um, from the first approach, so for my, my fr uh, in the at that time I just published, I just sent an email uh, telling that. Uh, I have started the project. The project was not uh, uh, yet completed. Uh, it's um, grown, and uh, I just uh, uh, look uh, in uh, the Git history. There are at least uh, 40 contributors that uh, at least send one patch uh, to the mailing list. I set uh, a release cycle of three months uh, just because uh, Yocto has uh, six months and they want to be 
quite faster, so I can decide which version should be go into a uh, Yocta release. Uh, is one uh, of a uh, listed uh, Yocta data. Here is the, the link. Uh, you can take a look. There, of course, uh, we have uh, updated to. And uh, uh, I try to ask uh, how many are using uh, software data in the mailing list. I really don't have uh, a <laughs> an answer, but uh, checking uh, or googling, uh, I have uh, seen that a lot of uh, projects. Uh, are using now. So, which are the main feature? Uh, an update must be atomic, and uh, this ensures that the update is atomic. It works uh, with uh, all common uh, embedded storage, so MMSC, SD, RONAND, UBFS, uh, or some strange problem uh, uh, with NAND uh, and uh, Hemming, for example, and so on. Uh, is a, there's a single image for multiple devices, so you can uh, deliver uh, a family of, uh, Im uh, of software, so a complete release for different devices with just one file. Of course, it's power of safe uh, together with a bootloader. There's uh, a hardware software compatibility check, uh, so it's uh, ensured that uh, the software is uh, for your board, for that revision of the board, and uh, for the, re the revision is not listed, the software is not installed. Uh, interface. Uh, I've shown uh, there's local interface, USB, SD, or whatever. Uh, remote interface, there's an integrated web server or it can pull uh, the, the package from an external server. There's an integration for backend. Really, there's a general interface for backend, but uh, currently there is just one implementation. It is for the oak bit. And uh, also as interface, there's this custom uh, client interface. That means if you have, you have a proprietary uh, application to uh, talk uh, with your device, and this is also responsible to get uh, the software, you can uh, simply link uh, your application to a uh, library, that is LGPL in this case, uh, to communicate with software data to make uh, the installation. Other feature, there is an integrated Lua interpreter. I choose Lua because uh, it's safe, it's very stable, and it's very small, so I have the Lua interpreter even in the rescue system. Uh, uh, we are support for current uh, uh, embedded build system. So uh, Yocto, I do myself. Uh, uh, someone else uh, has uh, done uh, the support for build root. Uh, there's uh, a general interface for bootloader because uh, you have seen uh, we have to talk with a bootloader to understand what is, should be done. Uh, currently, we are support for U-Boot and for GAB. And there is a small footprint. A very small footprint. Together with a bootloader, uh, we can have a fallback. So the previous version is running when the, the new installed version cannot uh, go un until the end. It's both an image updater and a file updater. Uh, there's a general interface to report the status of installation. Uh, this is important, for example, when we have a display and we are upgrading, and we have to show, for example, we have uh, six uh, steps. Uh, you are now third step uh, and 30% of this step. This is possible. And I'm using KBuilder to uh, configure the system. And another important feature is that there is no temporary copy at all. So uh, the, the package is uh, simply streamed, or can be streamed, is also a configuration option, can be streamed from uh, an external server directly to the storage without uh, any temporary copy. This, me this means that uh, uh, data is uh, uh, uncompressed, uh, encrypted, verified chunk by chunk without copying somewhere. 
Uh, regarding security, I uh, can say uh, I'm using the libcurl library, so HTTPS uh, is uh, probably nothing. Uh, that means uh, I, use, I can use all protocols supported by libcurl, so thanks libcurl. And uh, uh, there's the possibility to set uh, certificates uh, for server and client verification, which is, uh, for example, used for Oakbit. Uh, images can be verified uh, using a public public key. Each artifact can be encrypted, so you can also mix. Some artifacts are encrypted, some other no. And uh, uh, this is quite uh, new, there's a privilege separation. So have you seen, I have uh, multiple interfaces. And uh, uh, these interfaces are communicating with the internet and taking uh, the new update uh, package. Of course, if I run uh, these uh, processes under root, uh, it's uh, very bad. Uh, possible buffer overflow or something, and uh, a hacker or some malware can get uh, root privileges. So uh, this is split, just the installer, because the installer must uh, uh, write into the hardware as uh, must run under root. Uh, all other processes are configured and can be run under uh, another user and group. So first of all, we need uh, a compound uh, image. So we have uh, produced from uh, Yocto several artifacts. Uh, we have uh, a kernel, we have a rootfs, uh, maybe something else, and we have to bind all together. I've chosen uh, a CPIO format because it's very simple. Really, I don't use a CPIO. Uh, I just use the header. Uh, this is enough uh, to pack all together. The first file is the most important file, software description is a meta file, and is a description of a release. In this file, I will describe uh, which artifacts must be installed, where, and how. This uh, file where is passed, of course. I have uh, two, uh, typical two parser. Uh, one is a libconfig, I choose libconfig because uh, I, li I like this syntax, it's uh, just uh, a DTC, or a changes DTC. Uh, a lot of people uh, comply about this because they say, okay, but uh, we have no libconfig uh, on Windows. Uh, I try to say this is a mistake uh, and I have to install Linux, but uh, I have no success. So there's also a JSON parser. It works exactly the same as the libconfig, but in this way, they can uh, generate automatically with their own tool, of course. Uh, they can generate the software description with, uh, uh, for, for the release. There's another op option is uh, with uh, a custom Lua. So you can call an external Lua parser, and uh, in this uh, Lua parser, you can decide uh, your own rules. This is the current uh, uh, architecture. So you see there's, uh, on the bottom there are processes uh, working uh, or uh, accessing the internet. There's uh, like a bus, uh, really is uh, uh, an IPC based uh, on a Unix domain socket. Uh, the processes are running with uh, other user. They send the uh, update package to the installer thread. The installer thread uh, takes uh, the, the package, uh, is passed to the parser. If everything is OK, it's passed to an ender manager. Ender manager uh, is a router. So decide for each artifact who is responsible to install. In this way, I can also extend. I have a handler for uh, UBFS uh, for raw devices, for MTD devices, to set the boot environment. Uh, a remote is uh, if I have some outside uh, my system and so on. Um, uh, uh, I have also uh, um, the, the progress interface to communicate with external processes, which is the status of installation, and of course, uh, uh, Lua interpreter and some utilities. I, I just said that I use uh, uh, kbuild. This means uh, you can run a bitbake uh, minus c uh, menu config uh, soft update to configure it. And this is uh, the structure of software description. So there's a general header. 
when we have something border specific, so I can define for different border a different entries uh, into software description. And then we have section. We have a section for images, we have a section for file, we have a section for uh, scripts. Uh, here missing another one for the bootloader. In each of them, uh, I can uh, write uh, what I have to install. So really, we have the most important thing are three. So we have who, so uh, that means uh, the file name, uh, where, and uh, is uh, the device, so I, I decide where it should be installed, and how is the type. A type uh, identifies the name of a handler. This is the case uh, when I have uh, two boards in the same package. So I can say, first board, you, have, you are in a HMI. Take just the software described in the HMI. Uh, yeah. For another board, tape A. Uh, I can just send uh, or inform of this board, you have to take just this part. Another way to uh, search inside the description is using collection. This is my preferred way to implement a double copy. I know there's other way. Uh, some sets link and have just a description. Uh, I was asked which is my preferred way is this one, so I have collection, I have a complete description for each copy. So for the first copy, and uh, you see this is an example for with uh, UB. Uh, in copy once I have uh, that uh, should be installed in, uh, uh, in the volume root FS1. Uh, later there is uh, the setup for the U-boot environment. The same uh, is uh, for, for copy 2, but uh, just uh, in another volume. And when the system is starting, I know which is uh, the running copy, the standby copy. I pass this information to software update, and software update check this inside the software description and take the part related to the standby copy. Handless. Handless is uh, the way to install a single artifact. Uh, as I said, there is already a set of uh, handlers uh, in uh, software data, for example, for flash devices, Ubi volumes, uh, archive, so a table, uh, raw device, uh, environment, uh, script, there's pre install, pre install, install scripts. Uh, uh, the remote handler is fault uh, if you have uh, a known installer. This cannot be GPL because if you link it to uh, software data, it becomes uh, uh, GPL. Uh, remote handler is uh, like a way that the software update work as proxy, and uh, this artifact uh, is passed to someone else, to another process. But of course, uh, the, the rest of the part was already done by software update. So this artifact was decompressed, decrypted, verified, and then passed to another external handler. Uh, another feature, uh, this comes recently. Uh, the software description was uh, uh, just uh, uh, declarative uh, and uh, now is also executive. So it's possible to set a hook inside uh, uh, the software description and they are calling a function in Lua. This function should be part of the software description uh, because the software description is verified. Uh, it's also a way to well, let's say, uh, change dynamically the way the system is updated without upgrading software data. Rollback, uh, I think this uh, feature is uh, uh, together with a bootloader. So we need a boot counter in uh, the bootloader. When the boot counter reach uh, uh, a threshold, the bootloader is able to switch to the other partition. And uh, of course, uh, when everything is running, uh, the boot counter must be reset. Uh, image, uh, I said, uh, can be signed. Uh, this is part uh, of a build process. Uh, that means uh, everything is in this uh, meta software bit is uh, the layer I provide. Uh, you don't need uh, to compute hashes or to sign uh, yourself. Uh, it works uh, if uh, the private key is uh, on the file or is on a uh, hardware key. Uh, image is signed, uh, is uh, uh, sent uh, to, the, 
to the device. And on the device, you need the Republic key. With the Republic key, the image is verified. If the verification is successful, it's installed on the target. Same thing uh, is uh, with uh, encryption. But with encryption, I just use a symmetric key. There's no support for other, at least at the moment. Uh, you can decide which part uh, should be encrypted. So if you want to encrypt just some artifacts or some other, or you can mix uh, not, not encrypted with encrypted, the, a single artifact is encrypted during the build process. The SVU is generated and uh, transferred to the target. The target knows, because in this software description, there are uh, some attributes I have not uh, uh, shown, uh, because I wanted just to uh, tell you which is the most important thing, uh, but there's a list of uh, five attributes. Uh, one of them is uh, the encryption. You can say for each artifact uh, if it's uh, uh, encrypted or not. Uh, as well as uh, you can even say, uh, tell us of the data if uh, an artifact uh, is streamed or not. So you can stream all artifacts or just say, okay, this part is streamed, another part should be extracted and then uh, installed. Uh, each artifact can be uh, configured differently for the other one. So, uh, soft update has uh, a suricata mode. Um, I think the name uh, comes at the beginning because uh, I take the embedded server from the Mongoose project when the Mongoose project was completely GPL. And uh, suricata is also uh, an animal quite similar to a mongoose, so uh, I think I have to stop with this. And uh, uh, this suricata daemon is uh, really uh, a way to attach a different backend. So it's a daemon, it's running an uh, interface, it's a generic layer, and we can have uh, a different backend to communicate with server. Currently, and you see above, uh, this is the Oakbit server. Oakbit server has a, a RESTful API uh, based on JSON. Uh, is plan to have uh, multiple uh, backends uh, in software data, for example, uh, adding Mender or some other. Uh, it's just uh, a thing to uh, update, the, so to increment and to add a specific implementation. Build process. Um, I provide a meta layer for that. I know that uh, someone else uh, provides uh, support for build root. Uh, I have not used one, so I cannot say anything more. Uh, in uh, Meta Software Data, there is support uh, for uh, building the complete image, including uh, signing, including hashes, uh, and so on. So uh, the image is uh, automatically uh, produced. By, by the build process, and uh, uh, at the end, uh, I know that uh, some uh, customer has built also some uh, uh, connection between the Jenkins server to push uh, the image directly to the server. Or they, I don't know if they are using the OCP server. Another way is to put uh, the file in the uh, OCP server, and this is then taken by the device in development. I just show you uh, without going in details because uh, there's a lot of text uh, and uh, it's quite boring. Uh, the most important thing uh, is uh, to create a own SVU. Uh, there's a class. The class is uh, SWUpdate. You have to inherit this class. Of course, uh, there are some new variables as usual in Yotto as uh, this uh, uh, um, software update image. And uh, in, with this, uh, you can uh, uh, simply uh, uh, define which variables are, uh, which uh, artifacts should be part. Uh, just uh, one minute regarding the roadmap. 
uh, what I want is uh, to extend the community, to use the soft update as uh, an update gateway. I know I'm late. Uh, to add uh, dynamic Lua handles, so you can change the way to update uh, uh, the system, and uh, you can push new handles directly in your SVU. Uh, support for hardware keys. A bigger thing is uh, the Delta update, so to provide uh, binary diff. Uh, another thing is uh, to chain handlers. Uh, so now there's a handler for each artifact. I would like to have, uh, for example, a table go to a, a, row a row handler and so on. Adding new backend is also a very interesting thing, and uh, add a new modern website. So I know I'm very late. Uh, I plan to have demo, but I have no time, <laughs> so maybe some questions. Yeah. Do you need a specific uh, configuration in U-Boot to be compatible with the software update? Um, okay. Uh, the thing regarding U-Boot uh, uh, is uh, uh, you need to be sure that U-Boot and soft data are seeing the same thing. So first, uh, you have to set the you need a library. When you link soft data, there's a library. This is provided using MetaSoft data, or you have to provide your own. And uh, this library is generated when you're, you are generating the U-Boot. This is important because uh, U-Boot uh, has a default environment and uh, is not stored on, uh, uh, on the flash. You can also run without any environment in the flash. In this case, software data has no knowledge. So you have to link with this library. This library is produced with uh, your U-Boot machine uh, and uh, contains the default environment. So even if there is no uh, uh, environment stored in the flash, uh, Software data is able to uh, change the, uh, the environment and to save also for the first time in Flash without breaking anything. Okay, thanks. How do you make sure that the U-Boot environment is not damaged by power off during writing? By? By, by power loss. Uh, be, okay, because uh, um, we have two copies of environment. So U-Boot has uh, a config redundant. You have always two copies of environment. This is also something uh, that uh, should I say. Uh, you have seen that uh, in, uh, in the software description, uh, there are some parts regarding the variables. These variables are not set uh, in a sequence, but software that takes all of these variables, compute the new environment, and then store the new environment. So that means uh, there's no problem, there's not the case uh, a variable is set, uh, and then there's uh, a power off, uh, and uh, the environment is in a stranger state. What is the footprint of the, um, the software update image? What is it? The, the footprint of uh, the size. The, the size, uh, uh, the example was a real example. So that means uh, I have a project where everything fits, so bootloader, a, a environment, a kernel for software update, and a RAM disk, a compressor RAM disk, everything in 8 megabytes. Okay, thank you.